Hey everyone, welcome back to an episode of Friends from Work. I'm Tom, this is Sean, and on today's episode, we're going to be reviewing and discussing Oppenheimer. But before we do that, do us a favor, guys, leave a like, or like right now, subscribe down below, follow us on TikTok and Instagram, links are on the screen and down below. Spoilers, if you missed uh, history class. Oh, I don't, I don't, yeah, I missed that. It was horrible at history. <laughs> Social studies and science were not my forte, so I didn't even know about Oppenheimer to this movie, honestly, truth be told. Um, but yeah, I, I'll let Sean take, I took the lead in the last episode, so you can go ahead and take your lead, initial thoughts, um, what, what you want to start with. with the I will say I'm under, I was underwhelmed. Ooh. I don't know if it was the trailer or what. I thought it was going to be about the creating of the atomic bomb, like the actual creating of it. And the movie was more about Oppenheimer, obviously, it, that's what it's named after, but I'm not, like, I don't know. I guess the trailers are, and what Oppenheimer is most famous for i just thought it was going to be about the manhattan project and them building the bomb and it is somewhat yeah. but it's more so about like him being interviewed and his security clearance because his wife's like russian or something like he's got ties to russia it was the they're in the communist party yeah they're in the communist party and they were like i didn't realize that what that's what the movie was going to be about it was based on the american prometheus yeah. book um, I didn't real. I thought it was going to be about the Manhattan Project, and like I said, like maybe again that's my fault. Um, but like the trailers even showed, like they showed the football underneath the football or the field they were building. They showed yeah. them like they just like all the trailer stuff seemed like stuff about the bomb. And then when you watch the movie, it's just like a bunch of interviews. And again, to go on, I thought Cillian Murphy did a great job. He's one of my favorite actors. Is this? I thought it was Killian. I thought it was Cillian. Pretty sure it's I Cillian keep hearing Murphy. people say Killian. I don't know. I've heard, I've heard both, I will say. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's I'll Cillian say Killian, you say Cillian. So if he sees this, <laughs> yeah, yeah, he tells shot. He's wrong. Uh, um, I thought he did a great job. I thought his acting was wonderful. I thought, like I said, again, I just underwhelmed. I thought it was going to be – I really was looking forward to some Manhattan Project stuff. Um, it kind of dragged at times. It's just a lot of dialogue. It is a three-hour movie. It's so, a, yeah. there's a, and it's a lot of, like, four people sitting around talking, like just sitting at a table – um, so just very dialogue-y and just it dragged the time. But again, like I said, I was just underwhelmed. But, uh, and I was expecting it to be about like the engineering and the the building of the atomic bomb and the Manhattan Project. Okay, that's fair. Um, I was not underwhelmed. I came in with uh, no expectation. Um, actually, I, excuse me. My only expectation was I knew this was going to be long. All I asked is not to make it feel like three hours. And I, I feel like it didn't. Um, it, it was a lengthy movie. I'd, I'd say it felt like a two, two and a half. I'll say two and a half hour movie. Um, I feel like it was not a big difference, but no, you can tell it's a two and a half hour versus yeah. a three hour movie. So I think the pacing was, uh, I, I give it above average to good. It's above average to good. Uh, Sean did say there were some low moments. I do agree. Mm-hmm. It did drag at certain points. The pacing uh, was okay though. Yeah. 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 I, I think it, they it got in like a lot of scenes quick. Yeah. I wouldn't say it felt like three hours. Just it was, a, it's a lot of dialogue. It if, is. If it's a lot the of type of person who likes to see a lot of action happening on the screen, that's not, no, uh, it's not a movie for you. Um, yeah, no, I was really intrigued with it. Cause like I said, I had no knowledge, of anything. I just, Knew it was about Oppenheimer and kind of went with that. I, I, and I liked the whole uh, interview process because it was kind of cool seeing what he had to go through because of that situation and why it was happening because Levi Strauss or yeah, right Levi. Yeah. Yeah. Levi Strauss didn't like him. It was a whole beef type thing. So it's kind of cool seeing the whole backlog of it and just learning about it because like I said I had no well, knowledge yeah. of it I did learn all. some things and yeah. there, I didn't realize that he was under such scrutiny and all those. Things I didn't before. know either. I didn't even. Um. Robert Downey Jr. was awesome. Yeah, um, killed it. It was weird seeing him like not be an Iron Man, yeah. but you forget that he can actually act yeah. because he's just he's not been, to say he doesn't do a good job right. in Iron Man. But, but it's, it's been so long. And it's pretty like one, two, three A B C yeah. to be Iron Man. Like um but he was freaking awesome in this. What was I that movie, was, The Judge, right? Where his Yeah, where his dad's a judge, yeah, right? Yeah. That was a great What's movie. What's another one? Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. He's in that, yeah. right? Yeah, that's a good movie. Uh, yeah, the one with the judge is good. That's based on a book too. That's okay. a good book. It's a really good book. No, that was a great movie. Yeah. Um, that was like during his like run as Iron Man. Yeah, too. in the middle. Somewhere it was like in, in the middle. Yeah. I think it was like after Age of Ultron around mm-hmm. that time. Yeah, yeah. That's based on a really famous, a really popular book, and I really like it too. Yeah, no, but yeah, no. Um, I'm trying to think of some other things. Um, it was cool seeing um, kid actors. When I say kid actors, people from my era, like Josh Peck, he was the one who pressed the button. Mm-hmm. That was really cool to see. I mean, like he kept those people on minor roles, but I really like the fact that Christopher Nolan gave these like b-listers or people who are stuck in the childhood actor light 
and gave them opportunities so then they have that on their resume now. Oh, I was this person in the Christopher Nolan movie. Like, so that's such a cool uh, accolade to have. And the guy who played Roderick as well from Die Over a Wimpy Kid, he was in there briefly. He was There's the a lot of background characters. Yeah. I don't know if it's like Scorsese where these guys are like, I just want to be in a Nolan movie. But like yeah. what Emily Blunt was in it, he was she was his wife. But like, yeah. what'd she say? Like t- t- two lines? She was in like two scenes talking. Emily Blunt's like... One of the biggest actresses. Yeah, like, she can, I think she was heavier in the uh, later. Yeah, but it was still act. only like two scenes. Like, yeah. I saw a, a Twitter or tweet. It was like, even as you see, it's going to something else. Zeet or so he's changing it to Twitter to X, Twitter X or something. Oh, I don't know. Um, yeah, that actually happened today. I'm pretty sure. All um, right. Yeah, um, somebody tweeted out that a woman doesn't speak until like 25 minutes into the movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're right. Uh, my kind of movie. But... <laughs> um, yeah, I just thought I thought it was funny that like there was a like you said a bunch of like B like you thought might be A list actors yeah. at some time, but like a lot of doing like really small roles where they were like in two scenes. Yeah, I, I agree. I think it is one of those things where it's like uh, Matt Damon actually does an interview, and I think that's why we had different experiences because the stuff I heard and what you had in mind were two different perspectives. Like yeah. I heard like behind the scenes when uh, during the interviews, like when they all got the script, they pretty much all said the same thing. It was like uh, Christopher Nolan wrote in the perspective of like. There are certain scenes where it said I was, but he was uh, talking about Oppenheimer. Uh, like, it's saying I, so everyone understood when they read the script, this movie's about Oppenheimer, this and that. Like, mm. his ego, because he, obviously he had an ego, and they brought that up a lot. Mm. A lot of these scientists had egos. Um, yeah, theoretical physicists are all, Yeah. Like, even when they joke about him, I'm like, Sheldon's a good example. Yeah. If you watch Big Bang, he's a theoretical theory. Like, they're a fucking psychopath. Yeah. Like. So it was cool um, that he wrote it like that. So when I saw a lot of those uh, ideas be brought to light and – well executed as well as well surprised for like oh no i kind of got off track here but it was talking about uh matt damon so he's like oh, i'm gonna take a break and he's like i he's like i kid you not i'm the only time i will not take a break uh after because he just did a movie prior i forgot what it was what was his most recent movie i can't remember um but no he told his wife all right i'm gonna take a break for a bit and uh but the only thing is if christopher nolan reaches out <laughs> then i got to go back and he's like hey, what did he do with christopher nolan who, Matt Damon? Yeah. This movie. Oh, okay. Yeah. He was saying, like, in the interview. Well, I just met before. Oh, so he was saying, like, oh, I, I, I thought you meant, like, he had already done something with it before. I was no, no. He, was, okay. he said during the press run for this movie, he said, he's like, I kid you not, me and my wife are in couples therapy. And we said, uh, he's like, all right, I get I've been working on it. I'm going to take a break, but we have to make a deal. Like, only if Christopher Nolan, he's like, and this is before I even heard he was making a movie or anything. Like, I don't know any knowledge of this. And then. <laughs> yeah, Christopher Nolan hit him up next. He's like, well, I got to go to work. Mm-hmm. And so it was really funny um, to hear that. But, no, the, the point was saying, go back to your point, was, yeah, I think it's one of those same things, like how Jonah Hill was like, I'll take the bare minimum. What he has to be, like, legally paid. It was, like, three grand or something he made from uh, Wolf of Wall Street. Um, or that's what he got paid up front. I would assume maybe some residual. Whatever. Yeah, I'm guessing I think he got the him. bare minimum. That's one of my guesses. Yeah, I'm assuming they gave him some kind of cut of the, the like pay, or like the, the royalties. Royalties, yeah, because he's uh, na- like him being in the movie does help itself. Yeah, like, he's not the main character, but people are like, oh, Jonah Hill's in that. Yeah, like, I'm probably, yeah, it's probably good. But yeah, no. Um, I'm trying to think of some other things that I enjoyed. Um, the cinematography was great. So good. The I, scoring, the music. I, yeah. I thought the music was pretty good. Um. But again, like I said, I guess I'm just underwhelmed because I thought um, it, was it was gonna, gonna be, be about, about the Manhattan, Manhattan Project. Project. Like, and I like I don't I guess it's a nerd to me or everybody. That's like just and it's just such a uh, iconic moment in history. I just, and like that Oppenheimer's time or tied to that. I just I just I don't know. Like I said, through the trailers, I just had a feeling like that's what it was gonna be about, and I was really looking forward to that. And then when they get into it and then they're jumping all through like time jumping. So you're like, Oh, maybe it is going to be about that for some point. And then they're like, no, it's not. But again, like Tom said, it was interesting to see some of the interviews, some of that stuff. I didn't know the drama, the, that like he was a part of the communist party and things like that. I didn't know that. So I did learn some things and I thought the mute movie like on its own was still good. The acting yeah. was good. It wasn't like poor produced. I just, I think they did a bad job of promoting it in the sense like I'm guessing a lot of people thought it was gonna be about the Manhattan Project. Okay. I was like I was like they definitely didn't No, not, not yeah, not like they didn't were pushing out there. I just like I said, false advertisement or like I, I just guess, said I got yeah. the vibe that it was gonna be about the Manhattan Project. Right? Okay. Like, and not Oppenheimer's life or like you know what I mean, that time before that. Yeah. Like I just didn't get that vibe. Yeah, it was re- um I don't know. I I, I, I enjoyed it. Um I'm not saying he didn't enjoy it, but um 
Yeah, no, I wasn't. I wasn't disappointed. I like I told you guys earlier. Like we both, we both came with different, very different mindsets. He had a certain idea. I really had no idea. Like I had zero clue. I was like, I just thought, oh, Albert Einstein. I was like, I got, I got, like, ah, that's cool. Like, I was like, science. Yeah, science. Experiments. Um, I'm trying to think of some other things I want to bring up. There was some points. I'm trying to think. It was regarding, oh, um, another fun fact. So when it was black and white, that was the unbiased, uh, just, like, factual truth. And then when it was in color, it was through Oppenheimer's perspective. So, um, that was just a thing I wanted to bring up. That was a cool thing. That. I found out after. I found out a lot of the stuff afterwards, which is kind of cool to kind of go back. I do want to actually bring this one. I wanted to bring up my theater experience. I want to see it again. I had this movie. It's I. I think it's going to be very hard to watch it at home, just because you have a million distractions. It's not the type of movie you can hop on your phone and kind of ha- go in and out. You have to sit there for three hours and really pay attention. So I want to. S- I, I would like to see it again because my th- theater experience wasn't great because I had. The whole row was empty, first off. This is what really annoyed me. I had the whole row empty to myself. And then there was, like, I think one guy was, like, at the end. I was, like, okay, whatever. We're not there. But there was, like, five seats over here on the right empty. And th- this two guys come in. Like, I think, like, a father and older son. They sit next, like, right next to me. And the son, like, saw his, like, oh, let me move the other way. And then his dad was like, no, go over here. And then he fucking goes over to my side, sits right next to me the whole movie. They both take their shoes off. And then the dad, uh, shoes and socks, by the way, I was saying, well, the toes were out. It's disgusting. And then the dad, like, I, like, I saw, like, the Indian guy, like, starts, like, to keep trying. I'm like, I kept staring. And I'm like, I'm going to fucking kill you. Like, he's, like, getting out. Like, I'm like, I'm going to fucking kill you. He's, like, being obvious and annoying me. Was he recording the movie? Yeah. And then, like, the dad, like, midway through the movie, like, takes a phone call. And I'm like, are you, do you want to fucking die right now? I was like, what the fuck is wrong with you? And I hated him so much. So I have, like, a, a, a somewhat skewed, skewed um, score somewhat, a couple of, like, I cat points. I answer the phone. The recording thing I've seen, but answer the phone in the movie, uh, there? that's ballsy. <laughs> Uh, he must have really thought you were a pussy because I know for a fact he would have did that if I was there. But there was some like dad, there was some old guys behind me. I was like, I don't know, dude. I was like, I can't do this. I can't be asked. Not the son. The dad was obnoxious. Oh my god. So I've never, uh, I've never claimed to be racist, but now I do, is because that movie, this movie made me racist. My experience. So I hate you. Mm. So what'd you rate it? Um, I give it. I don't even know. It's. You were just gushing about I, the movie. You can't even rate it. That's okay. Uh, uh, Gazy. Would I watch this again in at home? No. <laughs> it's, it's dedication. Um, what I, I give Bay Ridge seven. I would if I had to choose. I'll give this a two, a two. Um, it was a well. It was a good, well written movie. Um, I want to see it again in theaters because it was also a little quiet in there as well. And I think seeing it in IMAX is better. I don't know. The screen felt really you small. You see it in IMAX? No. Oh. The actual they say you have to see it in IMAX or something? Yeah, but it was like only like seven IMAX theaters. Yeah. Well, there's one in Bullenberg, right? No. Yeah, the iMovie theater, iMovie theater, whatever. I iPick? Oh, is that? Yeah, isn't oh. I'm pretty sure that's. Oh, okay. I'm almost positive that's oh, IMAX. I didn't know that. But yeah, no, I'll see. I'll try that next time. They I'll, say you should see it in IMAX. Yeah, I do agree. I saw, and it was, it was not. It was pretty quiet. I was like, that that bothered me. Um, but yeah, no, I, I give it a two uh, minus my uh, theater experience. Um, it was a good movie overall. Decent pacing for a three-hour movie. Uh, everyone acted their asses off. Um, when Emily Blunt did come on screen, she ate. Cause I think that was intentional. Like, cause it was I, that's she was good. I mean, yeah, maybe that's why they got somebody so good for a small role. Because when she was gonna have to say yeah. something, it was it's just funny seeing like Emily Blunt. Like they keep doing flashbacks, but she's like sitting behind. Yeah. Oppenheimer. But that's like the whole point. Like Oppenheimer I know why I was getting yeah. interviewed. And you're like, is that Emily Blunt? You're like, she's not gonna be in the movie at all. Yeah. <laughs> she's just sit back there. That's what I was thinking about. And I'm like, I'm like, she's really famous to just yeah. be not saying anything the entire movie. It took 57 days to shoot this. That's it. That's it. Yeah, that's pretty quick. That's really fast. Yeah. Right? Movie. And the cinematography is, I'm guessing, oh man, that, that's Chris Van Olen was behind. He didn't have a because vi- it was shot on film. So they, it's what they call a video village where it has yeah. like all the screens and stuff behind. Uh, he's like, no, Chris Van Olen was like with, uh, it was like the cinematographer and Chris Van Olen like on the same thing and that was it. Wow. I mean, obviously like that's boom impressive. stuff, but yeah. 57 days. But uh, I'd give it a six. Okay. Uh, I do agree. Great acting, great actors. Great um, writing. It's a lot of dialogue. Yeah. Um, 
I would just say it's an uninteresting topic. That yeah. Um, it's and it's about something we like already know the outcome to. Yeah. So it's like they're doing all these interviews. If if we're gonna let him run the Manhattan Project, like we already know he he doesn't look like he the, you guys approve him and yeah. he does it and he's successful. So I think that part where it's like. Sometimes it's hard to make some of these movies about stuff we already know that happens. Yeah. You know what I mean? Especially that time frame. I think people in general, myself included, are getting a little burnt out from you just remaking history lessons. I'm just getting burnt out know. of movies in general. Yeah. Right now. Like we've been talking about this song. Like the last six months have been like you know blockbuster, what? blockbuster, blockbuster every week. Like you know what's next week too? Pretty sure it's uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Oh yeah, I'm definitely seeing that. I want to see it too, but for fuck, I, I don't even. That's just, uh, they, at least that's like a cartoon movie, though. I like, know, but I'm like, I can't be asked. Like, I can't. It's getting tiring, man. Yeah. Just, there's just so many movies. There's something coming out after that, a week after. Well, we did go. Well, also got to keep in mind, we went, we went what three years of COVID, where like every movie that was know. supposed to get put out stopped. That was, was so like, much nicer. There was a log jam, and now they're just like pushing movies out. I miss I, the Rona, honestly. Now I miss it. Let's bring I it back. Do too. Let's bring it back, man. Let's bring back some diseases. <laughs> Um, there's oh yeah, we gotta talk about the film numbers. Um, oh yeah, uh, it made eighty million domestically. domestically yeah, what did I say, fifty five? Yeah, but you were like, no, it's not gonna make eighty. I told you eighty to hundred. I was right on the tip, eighty. Right. I, I so did, yeah. I, it did better than I thought. I yeah. looked that up. It did eighty. That was better than I thought. And then uh, oh, it was like a hundred and twenty, a hundred thirty. I think it was one twenty five worldwide. Yeah, something like weekend. that. It, it did. It did good. It did a lot better than I thought. I, I, I honestly didn't think it was doing going to do. I just thought it was going to do bad because of the weekend it was coming out. Yeah. I think it would have done a lot better if it wasn't the same weekend as Barbie. But who? Um, I guess you just stuck with when your movie's coming out. Can't really keep pushing it around yeah. trying to compete with Barbie. But eighty was impressive. I didn't think they were going to do so good. Um, and that's still the first weekend. I'm sure more people are going to be. Barbie's already made its money back. Pretty yeah, so much. I was gonna say, <laughs> that's and, insane. And there's probably a bunch like there's not a lot of people like me and Tom who saw both movies this weekend. So it's like oh, would, all those yeah. people who saw Barbie and didn't see Oppenheimer are probably going to go see Oppenheimer next weekend yeah. or the weekend after that or something. You know, like people that. who probably did the double feature this weekend minus us was probably like I said, a lot of social media was a big thing. Like, oh, see it this Barbie weekend. Heim, Barbie yeah, Heimer, Barbie Heimer, yeah. yeah, that was huge on social. Like it was trying to. Yeah, but just like, like most adults, I'm got, saying younger. Yeah, I was yeah. going to say most people might. Don't got time to go no, see two movies. people in their 20s. That's all I'm yeah. saying. They're like my, my generation. And even then, like, they can't be bothered to go see the movies twice. Well, I'm not like, saying it the same day. No, yeah. I, t- I took a three day break. <laughs> I was like, I'll see Bar. I saw Bar. No, I saw Oppenheimer first because yeah. I was like, that's a bigger movie. It's going to be hard to get. I thought it was going to be hard to get. So I was not I was not super interested. So I think I had low to no expectations going in. That's why I think I enjoyed it more. Sean had higher expectations. So that's why our score differed is because. I had low to zero. I don't, I, I don't know if higher. I just, like I said, just diff. I had it's expectations different. that they didn't meet. I don't okay. know if. I don't think the movie was worse quality than I thought it was going to be. It just was about something that, like, at the end of the day, I really don't give a shit about. Fair enough. Um, but, yeah, that is it for this episode, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed. Before you head out, do a favor, leave a like right now. Subscribe down below. Follow us on TikTok and Instagram. Links are on the screen and down below. Comment what you also thought of Oppenheimer. Which one did you love more, Barbie or Oppenheimer? Um, and I'm trying to think of anything else. No, that is it, guys. And we'll see you guys next episode. Take care.